if you're elected, what would you, what would be your priorities in terms of what the community might need and do? What would be your top three priorities in the Congress? Well, the first priority will be to serve the district in a very different way than has been served for 40 years, meaning I will have an open door policy. You won't need to be a district leader or member of a political clubhouse to, to see me or to talk to me or to talk to uh, my office. We will literally have uh, community meetings everywhere. Um, I want to talk about and continue to uh, put pressure on uh, bringing the troops home. I think that's important uh, and you can never say it enough. Uh, these are wars that we should have never been involved uh, in in the first place and certainly we need to bring our men and women home. On that you would agree with Charlie Rangel? Well yes, except that I don't uh, compare President Obama to Dick Cheney as yes. he did. Yeah. Well, you know, it's true. I mean, okay. Okay, this but man, continue. This man, ahead, right, but this man compared President Obama to Dick Cheney. Um, that's outrageous. Uh, big difference there is that Dick Cheney engineered and initiated the war uh, on Iraq um, for all the wrong reasons, for Halle Burton contracts, for revenge perhaps, okay. and for it. But, but get, let's Obama, get back to your priorities. Right, President right. Obama so, inherited, so trying inherited. to put pressure to, so, to, to end bring that the war, get the home. troops home. Yes, absolutely. And to end uh, these senseless wars. We have no business in places that have never attacked us. Um, Social Security, we need to strengthen that. Uh, for the first time this year, 2010, it's running at a deficit. This wasn't supposed to happen until 2016. And now all of a sudden, six years ahead of schedule, we are running Social Security at a deficit. And so we need to make sure that we strengthen that so it is self-sufficient. Um, and what about things that would be much more specific to the district? Because housing. one of the things sure. the congressman is also housing. expected to do is to bring home some bacon. Housing, housing. And I believe, uh, you know, we're going to bring uh, uh, resources needed uh, for affordable housing. Look, I mean, um, you know, halfway joking but halfway serious. Uh, if I were elected to Congress, as I believe I will September 14th, we'd have three more rent control apartments. <laughs> okay. Congressman has four. I have one, like everybody has one. So if you do the math, four minus one, you have three left. And so hopefully we'll bring three rent control apartments, right? Well, uh, I think we have to clarify that for, the, for viewers. Uh, one of the issues facing Congressman Charles Rangel is that in the complex in which he lives, he eventually accumulated three additional apartments, which are all at least under rent stabilized. So there is some control of the rents in a city where everybody cries out that there is not enough affordable housing. So that's been one of the things uh, that's affecting him. But we all have one rent stabilized yeah, apartment how, how, that I know well, of. No, no, a lot of people don't have at one at right, all. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Either one or zero. Yeah. And I never heard uh, of four. But what would you do in the Congress specifically to do that? I would, I would uh, work with uh, my colleagues, and, uh, which I know they'll be more than willing to uh, work with me rather than the current incumbent of the situation. And um, again, um, highlight the need for affordable housing. It's something not only in northern Manhattan, but throughout the city of New York. And so... We have a good delegation uh, of some of the members there in our, that are pushing for it. I would be more than happy to work with them in, in delivering uh, more resources to build affordable housing in this city. What would you do in the Congress specifically to do that? I would, I would uh, work with uh, my colleagues, and, uh, which I know they'll be more than willing to uh, work with me rather than the current incumbent of the situation. And uh, again, um, highlight the need for affordable housing. It's something not only in northern Manhattan, but throughout the city of New York. And so we have a good delegation uh, of some of the members there in our, that are pushing for it. I would be more than happy to work with them in, in delivering uh, more resources to build affordable housing in this city. And uh, in your district, this district uh, that you are currently representing mm -hmm. still, and if you were to get this congressional mm -hmm. seat, mm -hmm. also true, mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of people for whom immigration is a yes, very big issue. Yes. What is your stance on immigration in terms of what you consider to be the key three or four elements that any uh, immigration reform needs to have? A path to citizenship for those who are here um, that have not violated any serious laws, that are just working hard to provide for their families. Look, you cannot deport 12 million people. Sure, they're here illegal, but you cannot deport 12 million people. And many of them have kids that were born here, so you can't separate families. That's inhumane. So a path to citizenship, or at least to some uh, uh, you know legal status in some sort, and um, you know we have to then try to uh, secure uh, 
you know, the, uh, the illegals coming in uh, to some extent. But so not by, but not stronger by, control yeah, but of not the borders? Building, no, not by building walls or uh, control of the borders, just having a, a better, uh, you know, computer mechanisms. Because the reality is that 80% of those who are here um, undocumented, 80% came here legally. They came here, uh, landed at JFK airport, uh, or Atlanta, or you know Miami, and or LA, their visas. and overstay the visas. Right. So eighty percent did not come crossing any river or crossing any border. Eighty percent came here legally, and so but, we. But have you don't to know do that something. they. You don't know that they. Uh, whether they came or didn't come with the intention to stay, overstay their Correct. visa, and be here illegally. Correct. Exactly. And so, you know, something has to be done about that. But certainly, we need to work with the twelve million people who are here who are here uh, trying to provide for their families, at least the ones, again, that are not caught up in any uh, crime uh, or any serious uh, uh, violation of laws. So those who are here uh, law-abiding, we need to give them a path to citizenship or to some legal status. And let's assume that such a bill were to be and passed I think, yeah. that met all those criteria. Yes. What would be your position about any of those who would continue to come in illegally? Well, we need to get, you know, tough with those that are, you know, that would come in the future because the reality is that, uh, you know, we can't absorb everybody, obviously, from coming in. But let me point out that this nation um, at one point had um, no policy on immigration. It was an open-door policy, and there were no quotas, no numbers, no uh, visas, and so you could come and go as you please. And in the 1920s, that changed. And even then, we still had a lot of Europeans who migrated to the United States from Italy, Germany, you know, Irish, er everywhere. And I dare say that, unfortunately, um, some of them, uh, or the system in which they, they came to be, uh, they slammed the door shut. When they came in through the door of opportunity, now they're slamming the door shut on many others who are coming in. Their faces are now changing. They come from Jamaica, from Mexico, from Africa, from the Dominican Republic. And so as the faces of the immigrants change, it appears that the rules have changed, and there's been a serious number of attacks on immigrants, like this Arizona bill, mm -hmm. um, and so, and I think that's unfortunate. Mm -hmm.